First tonight, drug trafficking, a common occurrence on Texas Panhandle highways. County and local law enforcement agencies are spending thousands of dollars a year to support canine officers, sometimes bypassing taxpayers and paying for them right out of pocket. These canines range from narcotic to tracking dogs, and some are even dual trained. Purdue 7's Marissa Lucero has been tracking several departments to find out if there is truly a need for these officers in our area and to determine the cost that goes into them. Tonight, she's tracking your money and joins us now with the special canine cost report. Marissa. Yeah, Selena, this story really began when we reported on a canine dog from Stinnett that had died from an apparent heat stroke back in July. Well, we received countless of emails from viewers wanting to know answers of how these departments care for these dogs that really require special day-to-day -day activity. Yeah, off the dogs really part of our family. Corporal Cody Lavery and the rest of the guys, most of whom are veteran canine officers, know the ins and outs of having a partner in the line of duty. However, that partner is only a little more than two feet tall and walks on all fours. That's good, oh boy. Oh, that's good. Same goes for Yara, Toro, and Django. They may play well at home with their families, but like any other officer, when it's time to go to work, good check. they change focus. Yeah, there it is. In just the last three days, Ockletree County deputies have made nearly 24 arrests for possession of a controlled substance. We do have a problem. And Sheriff Terry Bouchard says Yara was brought in to help decrease that Free. problem. Our primary drugs of choice here are marijuana, cocaine, and methamphetamines. In other counties like Sherman, when the county wouldn't purchase the canine unit, Sheriff Joe Powell purchased one with his own money. And these officers require a special kind of attention, and every canine officer knows just how much work that can be. It's a full-time job. It's a commitment. It's every day, 365 days a year. You know, every day we're on shift, they're right there with us. So we have to maintain them, you know, maintain their health records, you know, make sure that they're... They're healthy just like we are. In July, a Stinnett canine police officer left the city's only canine, Luna, outside locked in her kennel for about 36 hours while he was out of town. He claims to have left her with plenty of food and water, but when he came back, he found Luna dead. Luna was purchased with taxpayer money for a little more than $10,000. And as a result, many of our viewers wondered about the protocols for departments in our area. We do a lot of background on our handlers, the ones we allow them to put in for that. And then we go out and check their residence, check their, their area where they're going to keep the dog. We're not going to leave the dog alone for more than a, a few hours at a time without somebody checking on it. If I'm gone, an officer is going to come to my house at least twice during the day. APD has four dual-purpose dogs with a yearly budget of nearly $23,000. Their latest purchase, a $14,000 canine. As in Stinnett, the money comes from taxpayers or cease funds. Yeah, get it out of there, buddy, get it out of there. However, smaller departments like Ockletree and Potter County have one dog each. Oh, good boy. They have different ways to buy their dogs, and their yearly budgets range anywhere from two to $5,000. We receive these monies through uh, narcotics busts or narcotics arrests, and we wanted to put the money back into enforcing narcotic laws. A majority of the departments stick strictly to narcotics dogs with the exception of APD. It's very beneficial, you know, and we have Interstate 40, uh, Highway 54, that run right through Tupacary. We have the Greyhound bus, so we have a lot of interstate traffic that runs through us. We have I-40 that runs through Amarillo. We have 60 that runs through Amarillo. We have 287 that runs through Amarillo, and all three of those run through Potter County as well. So Officers say these canines detect what people cannot. Therefore, these officers are a necessity. Because of how expensive they are, obviously, we don't want to um, take a chance on losing $14,000 or, or having the dog hurt where it can't do everything that we need it to do but I mean in addition to that the dogs are really part of our family. Let's go boy that's good. As far as training goes for these dogs APD holds training sessions just like the one you saw in the story for all the canine units in the Texas Panhandle and their officers once a month at various locations here in Amarillo.